Namaste. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the two levels of masculine and feminine energies that we need to integrate within ourselves in a spiritual or Kundalini awakening. And the link between the goddess Kamakya and the second level of the masculine and feminine integration that happens within our body. We all are aware that we are a combination of the masculine and feminine energies. In every person's body, the left side of their body is their feminine energy. And the right side of their body is their masculine energy. The left side of the body is represented by the Ida Nadi. The Ida Nadi, it starts at the base of your spine. It crisscrosses over your spine. And it ends at the left side of your forehead region. The Pingada Nadi, which is your inner masculine energy, it starts at the right side of the root chakra. It crisscrosses over the spine and it ends on the right side on your forehead. So when they come into union here, the right and left side, the first level of your inner masculine and feminine energies are integrating. To reach this level, we need to overcome the ego drives that are there in the lower brain. The lower brain typically operates seeking pleasure and trying to avoid pain. As long as we are caught up in this desire for pleasure, and avoidance for pain, we are caught up in the lower brain. The lower brain, it has its fight and flight mode. So we are literally living our life from the fight and flight mode. And we have not evolved enough to be able to access the higher areas of our brain where intuition, higher wisdom, higher intelligence, creativity is there. When the inner energies, the masculine and feminine energies, they get activated. This happens just before the Kundalini starts rising up the spine. First, the Pingala Nadi gets activated. Energy passes through the Pingala Nadi. Next, the Ida Nadi gets activated. When these two Nadis get activated and they come into the brain, the Ida Nadi gets connected to the pineal gland and the Pingala Nadi, it is working at the level of the pituitary gland. Once this inner connection happens, to some extent we have integrated one level of masculine and feminine energies within us. Now we have access to the higher brain areas. We have transcended to some extent the lower mind. The way we look at the world is more balanced. We are more neutral. Though at this level, we will be undergoing the major shift in the Kundalini awakening process. That is, the Kundalini will be rising up the spine. And when Kundalini is rising up the spine, we will be experiencing a lot of emotional swings, lot of dream activity, lot of karmic ties or loops are coming to an end. We are learning more about life. We are healing. Our awareness is high. So each day you are growing faster. Your spiritual pace is now faster than anybody else who's on the spiritual path because here the kundalini has awakened she is moving up the spine and while moving up the spine she is clearing out all the debris that is there in all the chakras she is uh, rejuvenating your uh, various bodies she is filling them with energy and then she is totally transforming you by the time kundalini comes into the higher chakras you are a totally transformed person a totally healed person your awareness is working at a very high level when the ida and pingala nadis they meet in the head the ida nadi which starts at the left side of your spine 
it ends in the left side in your forehead but it connects to the right brain like this and it is working along with your pineal gland the pingala nadi which starts on the right hand side of your spine it ends in the right hand side here and it connects to your left brain so in a way what is happening here is that new neural pathways are getting laid the two brains such as the right brain and left brain which were not working in tandem they were working but with a little disassociation as the neural pathways with, between them are not well laid when we are living from the lower ego idan pingla have got activated the right and left brain have got activated new neural pathways new ways of communications are running between both lobes of the brain the higher communication channel that has got uh, established in between both the brains the brain is able to function as a whole unit that is the two lobes of the brain are coming together to function as one whole unit because of this a lot of aspects within us which were not in integration are now coming into integration we heal our awareness is rising so here the first level of integration between the masculine and feminine energies has been established in the body i have spoken about this in length in a series called the divine masculine and divine feminine energies in case you have not watched those series please watch that series it is there in the playlist it will enhance your understanding as to how the first level of inner masculine and inner feminine energies need to integrate in the picture here i have put across a diagram to explain the two levels of feminine and masculine integration that will happen within our body in a kundalini awakening process the first as i spoke earlier is about the integration of the left side and the right side of our body that is the two sides will come together like that next level of integration is if you look at the straight line in the picture at the top you have the para bindu beneath that you have the white bindu or the shiva bindu bindu means dot and at the bottom end you have the red bindu or the red dot or shakti dot this two that is the shakti bindu and the shiva bindu will merge at the second level of the divine masculine and divine feminine energy integration think of that straight line at one end where the shakti bindu is present that is the electric pole of that line i am calling this the electric pole because the shakti is electrical in nature when kundalini is rising up your spine you will feel it like electricity is running through your spine and the other side that is the white dot area i am not talking about the extreme para bindu i'm talking about the area beneath the para bindu where you see the white dot written that comes in this region that is the static side and that is the magnetic pole so the feminine energy is the electrical pole and the masculine energy is the magnetic pole the feminine energy is more kinetic in nature and the masculine energy is more static in nature so the second level of integration this red dot will move up the spine and it will merge with the white dot so in the first level of integration your masculine feminine energies merged like this at the next level of integration your shakti bindu which is here will merge with the shiva bindu here that is this is moving upwards it is moving upwards now all your energies are coming and they merging into a dot and this dot is a dimensional less dot it has no dimension i spoke about how the entire creation it is 
a fall in vibrational level that is when it has started at the level of parabindu the vibration is very high but when it starts creating various dimensions first the causal level dimensions are created they come they start at this level and they are there till this level from there down you have the subtle level of creation or the astral level of creation from the neck down to your root chakra you have the physical level of creation and that is why in the first five chakras that is in the muladhara swadhisthana manipuraka anahata and vishuddhi chakras we have the five elements earth element is associated with muladhara chakra the water element with swadhisthana chakra fire with manipuraka air with anahata and space with vishuddhi chakra so these five elements are uh, the building blocks of the physical dimension in a physical body so at various levels creation expresses itself or unfolds in a different way but it starts at the level of the parabindu from this parabindu three other bindus have emanated these three bindus it is the white bindu which is there here in the akya chakra the nada the nada looks like a crescent moon that is also a bindu and then the red bindu bindu simply means that it is a dimensionless dot inside that dot is void and the creation emanates from this void the para bindu which is present at this level all the universes the dimensions the building blocks at a higher level they come from the para bindu and from para bindu come three other bindus the first is the white bindu or the shiva bindu which is masculine in nature then when the creation comes down further the nada is there which looks like a crescent moon and in this nada you have the perfect balance of shiva and shakti that is the masculine and feminine energies exist in combination in nada then comes the red bindu the red bindu is the shakti bindu or this is totally feminine in nature and this exists in our root chakra the white bindu it exists in the agya chakra the dot which you see over om here that is the white bindu or the shiva bindu from here this level down the various astral planes get emanated and the nada is present just beneath the shiva bindu here it is a combination of the shiva and shakti energy some say that shiva bindu is not this dot but there is a dot present above this dot which is called as shiva bindu that is there are two dots and not one but in my experience i saw only one dot and the way i saw this in my third eye is that it looked something like this the second picture here i saw it like that i saw a crescent moon and above the crescent moon i saw a dot or a white bindu when you look at it from the front side it will appear like the crescent moon and there is a dot like this it look look like one is placed above the other but when you look sideways i had a lateral view of this Uh, bindu and nada inside my head when i looked at it sideways the nada is present in the front area that is the forehead area and this dot is present at the back so there is a distance between the nada and the bindu when you look at it laterally but when you have a front view they look like they are placed one above the other the white bindu please remember it represents the shiva it is even called as sita bindu it is typically masculine in its nature so it is the second level of masculine and feminine energies which i spoke about that you need to integrate is this white bindu and the red bindu 
then comes the red bindu the red bindu is in the muladhara chakra and the way i saw this red bindu inside my third eye is if you strike a matchstick a small tongue of flame will come from that matchstick imagine that small flame of fire and within that small flame is a bright red dot that is how i saw shakti bindu in my body in this picture it is clearer at the top of the head you have the para bindu from the para bindu have emanated the white bindu the nada and the red bindu the white bindu exists in the akya chakra bindu is a dimensionless dot from which the ability to produce or create a new level of creation exists so from the white bindu has emanated the astral plane of existence till here it starts here and till here then comes the red bindu the red bindu descends down further into the root chakra this is even called as bija in certain schools uh, of kundalini thought or kundalini knowledge this red bindu is the feminine energy the level of physical dimension that we experience our physical body they all emanate from the red bindu and the nada which is a combination of both the masculine and feminine energies it works like a link between that white bindu and the red bindu so when we are experiencing involution that is we are moving up the spiritual ladder when we are moving up the spiritual ladder we return through the same path through which we emerged so the red bindu which is kinetic in nature it moves up and it merges with the nada and the white bindu here so the three bindus come together again when the three come together again from it maha bindu is produced so your entire body your entire consciousness has involuted into a dot when this happens the other worlds other dimensions your expression at various dimensions it is all pulled into the dot from here on the states of samadhi will start we have different levels of samadhi this happens at a higher level in this process that is once the kundalini which is rising up through your spine it has crossed agya chakra and it is moving upwards it is entering the causal body realm from here on the person will start experiencing states of samadhi the degrees of samadhi and amrita also the inner elixir also starts dripping in this person's body for this to happen the red bindu which is there at the root chakra has to move up and it has to merge with the white bindu and when it is merging with the white bindu even the nada also gets merged along with these two bindus they all create a maha bindu and from this level onwards the person will start experiencing states of samadhi so this thing that i'm talking about is the second level of integration that is happening between the uh, masculine and feminine energies the masculine energy is the white bindu here and the feminine energy is the red bindu the shiva bindu it represents shiva at a subtle level it is a white dot but at a physical level it is represented as semen in men the shakti bindu which is the fire bindu or it is the feminine bindu the kinetic energy this at a physical level it represents the menstruation blood that a woman experiences in a lifetime the stage at which i experienced this white bindu and red bindu in my body was 
after my left side and right side of the body got integrated, that is the Pingala and Nida Nadi got integrated, Kundalini moved up my spine. The three and a half coiled Kundalini snake that is there at the base, it uncoiled, it moved through the Brahmanadi and it stood up straight like this in my spine. That is, a flow was created from my root chakra to my Sahasrara chakra. As to how this event unfolds within our body, I made a video on this. This video is titled as Understanding Kundalini or Spiritual Awakenings and Understanding what the Kundalini snake means. Please look into the playlist folder. You will find the folder and the video in it. It is the second part in that series. Once the snake stands up like that in your spine, then you will see the red bindu in your third eye. Now the red bindu is rising up at this point to merge with the white bindu. In earlier mystical schools, it was thought that the human body mind was a combination of mercury, sulfur and salt. Many experiments were done using these in various proportions refining them, purifying them. The aim of these experiments was to create the ideal chemical environment within our body so that the spiritual awakening can happen but through using various alchemical methods rather than focusing on changing behaviors or practicing a ritual. There are various paths through which we can have an awakening. So here the awakening would be brought about by using chemical substances. But when these substances are taken directly, for example, if you take sulfur directly or mercury, or for that matter, uh, when sulfur and mercury mix together, you get uh, mercury sulfide. When you take any of these things directly, it is poisonous to the body. The person will die. In fact, many stories of how these various chemicals were used in transformation of the human consciousness. These stories were carried from India and they were taken to other countries, especially Europe, where uh, half-baked knowledge went there and many kings, many people that belonged to the higher class, the royal families, the rich class, they were uh, tempted to try these experiments on themselves because this led to longer life, staying younger for uh, a longer time in their life. It meant extra strength, it meant extra intelligence, so it was very attractive. Many of them actually died when they tried using these chemicals to transform their consciousness. These Siddhas or alchemists or yogis, they knew about alchemy so well that they understood that the process through which our inner alchemy is transformed because when you are undergoing a spiritual awakening or a Kundalini awakening process, the inner alchemical change is happening in the body and it is established at a stable point in your body it transforms consciousness. The same method of alchemical transformation can be used externally to convert base metals like iron, copper into gold. Here they just change the electrons, the number of electrons in a metal to transform very common metals like brass into gold. This alchemical knowledge comes as part of the spiritual knowledge when the person is evolving and depending on what type of abilities the universe is uh, conferring upon this person. So when the inner masculine and feminine energies, that is the Ida and Pingala, the left side is the mercurial side and the right side is the sulfur side. When they two come into union, and the Ida and Pingala meet here in the head. Internally, the mercury sulfide gets 
form in the body. But this is not like the physical mercury sulfide or the physical mercury or the physical sulfur. But this is a subtle essence of those chemicals. For example, we have a physical body and we even have a subtle level presence. In the same way, these chemicals, they have a physical color, they have a physical form. But at a subtle level too, they exist. So the inner alchemy at the subtle level, it happens with the subtle presence of these chemicals at that level and not the physical aspect of these chemicals. If we ingest these chemicals into ourselves so that we can transform ourselves, it will only be poisonous. It is poisonous at the physical level, but at the subtle level, it is like elixir. The mercury sulfide looks like this. It is reddish, earthly, reddish in color. And cinnabar is a rock that contains mercury sulfide within it. And how is this formed? Volcanic eruptions is where sulfur comes out from the ground. Many other metals, elements come out of this volcanic fire. Cinnabar is also a product of volcanic eruption and so is mercury sulfide. So the Ida and Pingala Nadis, that is the left side and the right side of the body, when they too come into integration, that is the first level of integration happens in a person's body, that creates an inner alchemy, that creates the subtle essence of the mercury sulfide to form in the body. In India, we apply the red dot or the kumkum. This is a combination of turmeric and some other spices or some other chemicals are added to turmeric to turn it into red. We use this on a daily basis and we apply to our forehead region here. I think that this represents the mercury sulfide that is formed within the body due to an alchemical process. So to remember that this process happens in the body, we have this beautiful tradition where we apply kumkum to our forehead. Even in temples when we go there, kumkum is given to us. And this kumkum, it represents the mercury sulfide which I just spoke about. I again repeat here, the left side, the feminine side and the right side, masculine side, they come together. When they come together, it is like mercury and sulfur are coming together. As a result of that, mercury sulfide gets created in the body. And where does this get created? In the Muladhara Chakra. The Muladhara Chakra is red in color. And once mercury sulfide gets created within the body, that is when you will see the red dot in your Muladhara Chakra. So here the second level of integration, inner masculine and feminine integration will happen at this level. But for this to happen, mercury sulfide at a subtle level should form within your body. Now what I am talking about, I am speaking from my personal experience. This is what happened in my body. And these are not from any book. So this red dot or this red bindu, it is linked with the mercury sulfide that is produced within our body. So the color is also the same. And this is present where? It is present in the Muladhara Chakra. Now here I come to the goddess Kamakya. Goddess Kamakya, it is a Shakti Pita. It is a temple where Shakti resides in the form of Yoni or form of Vagina. The red dot, it is connected with the mercury sulfide, the essence of it. And this is connected to the goddess Kamakya. The goddess Kamakya, it is a Shakti peak, that is a place of Shakti, the power of feminine energy. And this temple, it dates back thousands of years. It is in India. 
Kamakya Shakti Pita. This is where the yoni of Shakti fell when Vishnu severed her into many pieces. There is a story that goes Parvati, Shiva's bride Parvati, wanted to visit her father's place for certain ritual. She was not invited to it. So she still goes to her father's place and she gets insulted there. When she gets insulted, she cannot take the insult and she jumps into the fire of Yajna which is there. She dies and when Shiva comes to know of this, he rushes to that spot and he picks her dead body into his hand and he is crying. He is in deep sorrow, in depression and he wanders the universe. He is crying for his beloved. After a while, God Vishnu sees this and he decides that Shiva needs to come out of this depression. For that reason, he uses his weapon to cut Parvati's or Sati. She is called as Sati in this incarnation. To cut Sati's body into many pieces. So many of these pieces fall in various parts of India. And some are in Pakistan. Wherever these pieces have fallen, those places have become a powerhouse of Shakti. Temple called the Shakti Peets are there in those locations. So here in Kamakya temple, the Yoni or the Vajaina of Goddess Sati fell here. Now if you go back to what I said earlier in this video, the Shakti Bindu, it represents the menstruation blood that comes in women at a physical level. So Kamakya temple is where you have the menstruating Kamakya goddess. Once a year, the river that is flowing through this area, the Brahmaputra river, it turns red for three days every year in the month of June. During these three days, it is said that goddess Kamakya is menstruating and the temple is closed for three days. So these three days, the river turns red. And the reason why this river turns red is because of the presence of mercury sulfide or cinnabar. And this is present in huge amounts in this area in and around this temple. That is why when somebody sits and does any type of a ritual in this area or they take up an initiation or they take up some kind of mantra chanting or some kind of mystically oriented uh, practice, it immediately fetches result. The reason is the power in this area comes from Kamakya and Kamakya is linked to cinnabar or mercury sulfide which is present predominantly in this area. That is why the power of Shakti is very strong in this area. Many Tantrics, many Siddhas, they still are present in this area and they do severe penances, many different types of Tantric worships in this area because the power of that geographical location is very strong. In this Kamakya temple, Prashad is given to the devotees. Prashad is something given to the devotee when they visit the temple. It could be a food item. It could be some kind of a watery based uh, offering that was given to the goddess or the god there. Or it could be flowers or a piece of cloth or a piece of string. Something which we can take home or which we can consume. After this has been given to the goddess, this is given as a blessing to us from the goddess. So in the temple of Kamakya, when we visit this place, the priests there give us this red cloth. This is a normal white cloth that is dipped in that red menstruating blood-like liquid coming from the temple. The redness of this cloth comes from the mercury sulfide that is present in the 
water that is there in the temple. This comes naturally, not that somebody is mixing uh, mercury sulfide in it. It is coming naturally from the ground level like that. And as I told you, cinnabar or mercury sulfide is copiously present in the soil in this area. And that is why this is called the Yoni Pita or the Shakti Pita where the goddess is menstruating. So this is the red dot which is present in our Muladhara Chakra. So goddess Kamakya is present in each one of us, every man, every woman as that red dot in the Muladhara Chakra. This red dot gets activated when mercury sulfide at a subtle level gets generated within our body when the left side and the right side of our body integrate. So that is the connection between goddess Kamakya, the mercury sulfide and your inner spiritual process. So when somebody is undergoing a kundalini awakening or a spiritual process, you will need the subtle level of mercury sulfide to be formed in your body. And this can happen through the divine blessings of Goddess Kamakya. If you are undergoing this process, it is always a wise decision to visit this temple. Spend some time there because when you spend time in and around Kamakya temple or staying in that region, an alchemical reaction will happen in your body where the mercury sulfide gets generated within the body. This can be seen as volcanoes bursting when your dream space or maybe in your visions. When mercury sulfide was getting generated in my body, I was seeing dreams where volcanoes were uh, bursting in my dreams. Lot of cinnabar and mercury sulfide were coming out of the volcanoes. And when the red dot phase in my Kundalini awakening process started, I was thinking of visiting Kamakya intuitively. But Kamakya is very far away from my place. I dropped the idea. I thought I'll go there a little later. But then I was meeting people who went to Kamakya. They came back to my place and they were discussing about Kamakya temple or I was getting recommended on YouTube to watch Kamakya temples or I was chatting or talking about Kamakya temples. I even made a video on Kamakya temple. There was, this was an interview with Mr. Tim Rastow. So a lot of these synchronicities happened in and around the time that Red Bindu manifested in my life and this Manifestation is very strongly linked to Kamakya. So during that phase of three to four months, Kamakya was surfacing in my memory, in my knowledge very often because of that internal alchemy that was happening in my body and the link that has to the Kamakya temple, the goddess Kamakya was coming to my memory or coming into my experience during this phase. The spiritual process, no matter what your path is, this leads to an inner alchemical change. This inner alchemical change, it happens over a long period of time. It takes time. And then this has to stabilize in your body. That is why spiritual transformation happens over many years. It cannot be done in a shorter period of time. If somebody manages to do this in a shorter period of time, it simply means that they have done their sadhana and their spiritual transformation has started in their previous lifetime. They are just finishing that process in this lifetime. So generally spiritual transformation happens through one or two lifetimes and it is always good that it happens slowly because our body will be able to cope with the changes and the alchemical changes they stay in our body, they don't wither away. We need to be patient in the process and we need to be totally committed and surrendered to the Goddess in this path. When we do this, we are allowing this process to blossom inside our body. When somebody is undergoing this process in their body, 
if there is a volcano near your place where you stay it is good to visit the uh, volcanic sites because mercury sulfide is present in abundance there and it will affect your inner alchemy at a subtle level you should not consume it directly it is dangerous or you can even visit the kamakya temple the kamakya temple and plan your visit in such a way that you can stay there for a longer period of time this has an alchemical effect on your body and your body will be able to produce a subtle level of mercury sulfide this is the link between the kundalini awakening process the goddess kamakya and mercury sulfide thank you